Welcome to this video on using Scribe How to create a quick walkthrough guide. So this is a tool that I've been looking at recently personally and professionally in my role as an IT training manager, training developer, e-learning developer, etc. We do create a lot of support, user guides, how-to guides, things like that. And obviously we have very useful formats and we look at the branding and the style and everything like that, but they can be quite time consuming to create. So I have looked at Scribe before, there is a bit of AI in there to help you out. But what it is, it's a really simple tool where you it will record what you're doing in a browser and then create a simple user guide with steps and pictures where you can make some edits depending on what um, depending on what level of access you've got to Scribe, what account level you've got. There is a free version where you can do limited, so that might be quite useful if you're just sharing them within your team or individually or personally. But if you want to do them professionally and change the logos and branding and things like that, or you want to do an application or a mobile app, then you will need the pro version. But if you just want to do a walkthrough of something in your browser window, then the free version works really nice. And that's the one that I'm using today to show you how to do it. So you can download the Scribe extension into your browser window, but I'm just gonna go for this video straight from the homepage. So I've signed up for an account and I'm on my dashboard, my homepage. And in the top right hand corner, I have a new button. And when I cr click on that, you can see I can only select browser because this is only a free version. And what it will do is it will allow me to open up a new tab. It will record the Scribe Workplace or it will pick up any other tabs you've got open. So it knows I've got a Google Sheets tab open and I'm going to select that option. And it's immediately switched it over for me and it's telling me it's captured. So a couple of things you might want to be aware of. There is in the top right hand corner this controls icon. And obviously I'm on the free version at the moment, so I can't I can't really do a lot with it. But what I can do if I click on move controls is I can decide where I want that control button to be. I can put it in any one of the four corners to make it easier for me to access. If I'm not happy and I want to delete this scribe that I've started, I've got a delete button. And obviously when I've completed, I need to click on the tick to complete that option in. So I'm just going to close and hide those controls down. So as soon as I start clicking into this browser, it's going to pick up what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do to add to this is I'm just going to add, actually, I'm just going to make some minor changes to the order amount and I'm going to add some decimal places. So I'm going to go to the order amount column. Obviously, when I'm capturing, I don't need to, I don't need, any audio on this because it's just capturing what I'm doing on the system. I'm just going to select those and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to in the toolbar, I'm going to increase the decimal places by one and then two. And what I'll also do is just change some colors. So I'm going to go into the first name and surname and select all of those. Go to the text color option and select red to change those colors. And that's all I'm going to do. I want it to be really nice and simple. So I want a really quick, easy, basic scribe to show you how it collates that data. So let's go back up to my controls and let's click on the tick box to finish that off. And what that will do is it will open up in another tab and you can see at the top, it's not really done very well with this one. It's not a guide to navigating a specific website, um, but I can obviously go in there and make changes to that and just call it Google Sheets edits. And then you can see if I scroll down, it's picked up the URL I was in and you can see it started to pick up some of the steps and options available there. What you can do is you can click on the text and you can make some quick changes to that. Also, I've got Grammarly on my device, so I'm just gonna pull that down and away to the corner. You can, you can't really make a massive amount of edits to the image. You do need the pro version to do that. So if you want to really customize that, you will need to pay for the pro version. But what you can do is you can zoom in and zoom out of those images to make it a bit more relevant to what you're looking for. 
There is an option, a tick box as well, if you want to select and do certain things. So if you want to delete loads of steps, you can do that. There are three dots where you can click and hover and move those steps around if it makes more sense to have them in a different order. So there's the six dots on the left. There is three dots on the right where you can see you've got different options there to play around with and you can get rid of one if one doesn't work. So it's not really helped me here. It says click here, so I would need to click. So click the increase decimal places button. And if I do select some of that text, you can see I've got some odd, some very basic functionality here to change the format in so I can bold those buttons. I tend to do that quite often if I'm talking about buttons in any of the user guides. And I've got a few other options. I can add hyperlinks and things like that, bullets, numbers, etc. if I want to just pull things together. And what you can do as well is you can group steps together. And you might have noticed there's a little plus there as well. So you can actually add things if they were missing or if you want to update it with a brand new step, you can add them in as you're going along, which is really nice. But there are tons of extra options as well to play around with. But let's keep it super simple here and just see how, if I go down, it's just picked up all of those bits of, of the edits that I have made. And then it stopped at the end. So what I can do now is I want to click on done editing in the top right hand corner. And you can now see what this might look like if I share this, if I PDF it. So I'm going to make those changes and then when I'm happy, what I can do, and it's suggested how long it goes for as well. So you can see if you're, you're sharing a process with someone, it's suggested how long it might take based on how long it took you to do it. What I'm going to do is in the top right hand corner, the final thing in just to do this super basic walkthrough guide is click on share. And then what I do at the moment is because I've got no one in my team and you can have a scribe team. What I like to do is go to export and then you can just export it as a PDF. You have a ton of other options, but again, some of them are not available because you might need the pro. Smart embed might be quite useful as you can embed it into your SharePoint site and other options. You've got WordPress there and loads of different options to play around with. You can pop it in an iframe, but I'm just going to export it to a PDF. And this will generate my file and then I'll open it just to finally show you what it looks like. It's really a tool where you want to go around and start playing around with it and seeing what you can create. You can share these online, you can share them with links and you can also create them and download them and you can upload them to anything or just share them with others. So you can see because it is a free version, I do have Scribe on there, but this is what it's going to look like. And it's nice and big and bold. So I made a change there and that really does pop out a little bit better. And if I scroll down, you can see all of my bits. And obviously I can download that. I can print that if needed. I can share that with anyone else. And it was super quick, if I don't want to make too many edits, to just record what I was doing on the screen and then share that with my peers, with the people I support or anyone else. So even if you don't work in training, you may need to upskill some of your team members at times, you may need to map out processes, and this tool will work really well for you to do that. Now there are other tools on the market that do work quite well as, as well, but this one is super easy to use. The interface I think is nice and pleasant. It's not the cheapest if you're going for the pro version, so just a pre-warning there. But I really like looking at it and I think I'm going to use it a little bit more in my professional and my personal environment. So please do have a go at that one. I think a lot of people will find some really great uses from it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what recordings you'd like me to do next.